In this video, I'm gonna to attempt to create my first ever see-through mirror illusion that you can look through to see the future, whether that be one we want or one we don't. So you have a mirror. Oh, look at who's that handsome camera person. <laughs> and then one of these, which is, well, it looks like a mirror. And using the power of lighting and this mirror that you can see through, the idea is like, imagine my hands in there. You, can you see it repeating? Oh. All right, it's oh. proof of concept. Oh. I want to do that, but I want to do it twice next to each other so that as you view what you're looking at from a different angle, you see a different infinite future. This is inspired by the theme that I'm working with, which is the theme of ASUS's current art competition. ASUS have sponsored this video so that I can let you know that if you can depict an incredible future, you may win some incredible prizes. Stay tuned for a lot more of those details, but I'm excited to see if I can make an incredible future incredible to look through to. But the first step in initiating this strategy is to create the housing, which I think will also help make sense of what my plan is because I don't think it's super clear to you right now. So the plan is to make an interior triangle twice. Creating the triangular boxes that I can build the worlds in is crucial and I really want it to be as seamless as possible. At the end of the day, even a one millimeter gap between these mirrors will be doubled and reflected infinitely. So getting this first stage right is critical. And then with the core shaping and construction in place, it comes down to making sure that the interior is gonna fit and reflect nicely. Starting off with some foam to sort of roughly block things in place and see if things start to fit together. And then moving on to a little bit more of a refined fit with some more accurately cut card stock. So we need a test. This is gonna look good. Now looking in the top, top in and sort of see it does start to infinitely reflect this just pop something in there you can see it reflected on all sides but the tricky thing is we need to we need to be able to see through here to see it reflected on all sides and we're seeing a lot of what's out there yeah now my theory is it all comes down to light so if we turn off light out here and on light in there You'll see in there and not, you won't, it's not reflecting anything, it will be black out here. So shall we turn off the room lights? Okay. Ooh, whoa, hang Ooh. on. That's uh, that's an infinite, that's an infinite thing happening there. And I don't know if there's a better side because I, I don't know which side of this is more effective. Yeah, that is clearer. Wow, interesting. That's uh, I think we've got our concept reasonably proven except this is contact fix adhesive which isn't particularly exciting so fortunately i've prepared two cities worth of 3d prints futuristic and dystopian i'm going to create a window through to both of those so let's test this out just put a few of our futuristic city buildings in place this is going to give us an idea pretty quickly if this project is Cool or not? Oh, I think that's cool. Holy moly. <laughs> I think that's cool. That is an infinite city. Hey Tom, I reckon this is gonna work. I think you're right. With my proof of concept working, it was time to take my 3D printed buildings and try and come up with a bit of a layout that I think will work really well to represent the world I'm making, or the worlds I should say, in a way that will be appealing when reflected infinitely. For the bright utopian future, I picked a variety of interesting shaped buildings and gave them enough space between them that they feel like they have room to breathe and that I can add some greenery to. With the dystopia, of course, well, you know I'm gonna cram the crap out of this place. And in fact, filling things so tightly that there's barely any room to breathe or move between the buildings, making sure there's enough destruction visible from all angles, and even gluing one of the double print buildings on top of itself to make sure we have an extra high, extra crumbly building. I really want this to feel overcrowded, overpopulated, and certainly overwhelming for anyone who might live in there. And with the building plans ready, it's just a matter of painting them up to suit the vibes for the worlds that we're about to create.
So I have my dystopian, crumbly, apocalyptic city ready to go. And of course, my beautiful, bright utopia. Let's see them in context. Crumbly dystopia. Boom. All right, that's, that's pretty cool. I think it's gonna be even cooler when there's a contrast of what it's next to. I beautifully mapped out and laid out utopia. Plan this so that that building goes at the back. It's hard to do this in a way that doesn't look too mirrored, but I think that's gonna look pretty good. Utopia, oh my God. When we, uh, when we do the lighting for the reveals, that'll be really cool. Maybe if I lift the city higher, maybe higher will be brighter. I think that is nicer than if it's lower. Let's have a little look, see at our, yep, that's depressing, perfect. This video is proudly sponsored by ASUS and the Pro Artist Awards, an annual free to enter global creative competition. And the theme of 2023 is seeing an incredible future. There are four categories, photography, graphic design, film, animation. And I'm proud to let you know that I am one of the judges in the graphic design category. So I will be reviewing your awesome entries. The total prize value exceeds a hundred thousand US dollars with over $60,000 of cash prizes in total, bundles of incredible ASUS creator products, and of course the perks of global publicity featuring on the ASUS website and social media, and you'll also be selected as the demo project for ASUS's spatial vision technology and broadcasts worldwide. There are four winning spots up for grabs and four runner-up placements. And there are four Pantone special awards for people who demonstrate the best and most vibrant use of color in their entries. And three monthly lucky draw prize winners in April, May, and June. All the links are in the description. I can't wait to see your entries and the futures that you dream of. And if you're a little bit intimidated, you don't quite know where to start, we actually made a tutorial over on Insert Art where Alicia and Morgan created digital artworks where we three will take you through all of those and the steps that they took to envision their incredible future. Go get creative now because submissions are open until July 15th. Huge thank you to ASUS for sponsoring this video and allowing me to bring my uh, vision of an incredible future to life. And this, this will be fun too. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start off building one landscape of the two at a time, starting off with my apocalypse. With the buildings I've selected and the triangle that I'd cut out ready to go, I cut a new piece of thicker foam to go under it, basically to lift the whole thing to be a little closer to the light source, but also to create room that I can cut out to put some lights inside. See, I have this sneaky little idea of drawing and carving out some cracks and fissures in the ground that with a little cleverly placed lightage it could look like a chasm to hell. I don't know guys, it's just freaking cool lava cracks, all right? And it's an apocalypse, stick with me here. And that's worth suspending disbelief because as you can see, with the cracks cut out and put on top of the lights, <gasps> yeah, we're onto something. Almost as much as this big squoogy mix of sand, black and brown paint and glue is onto my cardstock, creating a really rough asphalt base for everything to work on top of and creating a really solid structure once it's dried, on which I could glue some rubble, which is actually just darkly dyed corkboard that's been crumbled from a video ages ago. Really weirdly useful stuff. I glued some clear blister pack plastic to the bottom of my fissures, and then I glued it all as firmly as possible to my foam. With my foundation laid, it was time to figure out where the buildings go. And just putting my cracked asphalt base into the mirror world and placing the buildings in there, I can see this coming together really quick quick and really cool. With a quick test of the lighting, and once I'm happy with that, it's time to lock the buildings in place by hot gluing them down so they ain't moving. And now with all those buildings firmly stuck down, it's time to take the base back out and to keep working on my terrain. Starting by sponging down a darker road texture over the brown to make sure we have some darker areas that can count for actual roads highlighted by some white dotted lines. Then going around the tops of rooftops and using the goopiest weird texture paints I could find that would hopefully dry in a muddy, dry, earthy texture, which of course is accentuated by the colored pigment powders and weathering effects that I use throughout the board. Not only does this tie all of the details in together, but it helps me mute in areas that are a little too sharp, like the white dots of the road, and give everything a little bit more of an earthy look rather than a painted look.
Last but not least, it's time to paint the edges black, ready to put it back in there because anything visible will be visible from the mirrors. So if the green of the foam is visible, well, that's going to be repeated infinitely. All right, making really good progress on my Apocalypse City. Oh my God, how satisfying is that? And that's just with a few repeats. When we have infinite repeats working, I'm hoping it's gonna be really epic. Why there's lava, I don't know, but it looks really cool and really apocalyptic. I have a whole bunch of really cool effects I think are gonna really tie this together. Part of which is gonna work with this acrylic laser cut ceiling I've created. I wanna have a smoke and smog that's sort of built up and again, endlessly unfolds out into the landscape, but I'm gonna have to wait till later because that's gonna be when I'm putting it all together. So I'm at a stage where I'm happy to pause my apocalypse room and move on to my utopia room. But just one last time. Oh my God, how satisfying is that? Oh my God, it's so cool. All right, let's get green. And now we move on to our utopia. Very different approach for this one. I wanna get the bones of both of them as good as I can before I bring it all together and lock it in place. And for this one, I really liked that Fisher effect. So I wanted to do a similar thing, but this time a simple pond of water. Now, obviously it won't be lit from within technically, but if it's a beautiful bright sky, it would reflect light. And I just wanna have it pick that up. So even if there's a light in there that's on at 2%, it will hopefully add a little shimmer to the water that will really make it come to life. So I follow the same steps, cutting a cavity for my light and then covering my terrain, this time in a mix of strong green paint with glue that I sprinkled all of my terrain effects on top of. Some really fine and vibrant green grasses. Now this would be built up in layers because when that first layer dries, I go through and add a sprinkling of water mixed with PVA glue and hand sprinkle on an even lighter green grass. I just want to make sure that the utopia that we hope for looks like the most beautifully kept lawn you've ever seen in your life. With that in place, this time I started off by painting the edges black so I didn't have to risk painting my grass black later and glued my clear plastic to the bottom of where the lake would be, but this time gave it a bit of a sanding, which gave it a matte finish that hopefully would prevent the individual LEDs from showing up too clearly. And with a bit of a resin pour on top of that later, it should show through nicely as a body of water. With all that firmly stuck down, it's time to put our buildings in place. Now, as you can see, some of my buildings have green rooftops, which I painted glue onto and sprinkled my green grass obviously creating these lovely lush terraces that our happy citizens of our bright future can go enjoy. Lovely views of our infinite utopian city. With the rough positioning of our buildings much more spaciously spread apart, I glued them in place. It's time to move on to bringing it all together with lovely webs of walking paths between the buildings. You see, this future doesn't have roads. I figure not only do we use electric flying cars or teleportation devices, the only thing that we need on the ground between the buildings are the walkways for when we decide to go out and enjoy our leisurely strolls in nature. It's time to bring things together and see how we're looking side by side with our utopia. As you can see, this is working really good just as the mirrors on the two sides, not including the front mirror. So it's not infinite yet, but even just the illusion of the world split between the two and the repeat that we have is really effective. So with everything in place and tested, ready to go, the finishing touches in our utopian city entail delicately planting our trees throughout, which really bring the whole thing to life. There's really not a lot I wanna add in here because honestly, less is more. There's something about minimalism and cleanliness that we really wanna carry through our utopian city. But the apocalypse side, well, that's just a whole big bloody mess. So let's mess it up. With our orange fishes lit from underneath, I added a little touch of a orangish red paint just to make it feel a little more lavery and less LED-y, if that makes sense. And then with everything finally put in, I can put my final pieces of my plan together. And for this one, I really wanted to add this volumetric feel of fire and smoke. Starting off with the lowest layer of orange felt that I threaded and tore up so I could really thin it out and spread it in between the buildings, creating this feeling of hot smoke and fog, forever drowning this city in the chemicals that it's produced. 
Then the little something I thought might work well and didn't 100% know was the theory that if I add super glue to some of the top areas of the buildings and shove black felt in it when it dries, I'll be able to pull it up, tear it away and have it create smoky streams. But that can't be known until the glue dries. So with that set aside, I move ahead to preparing the top of the whole piece. Cutting off half of my diamond film protection and giving a light spray misting of grey to muddy up the light and create a mottled cloudy effect which would serve as a base for the dark grey clouds that I would have looming on top. And then with everything in place, it's time to tear at these smoke clusters and shape and reveal these pillars of smoke emerging from the recently charred buildings. A world constantly on fire to contrast with a world alight with joy and innovation. All that was left was to piece it all together and create my final illusion box. And for my final reveal, it's a handsome cameraman. Wave, Tom. Hello. There you go. It's my greatest work yet. <laughs> okay, now obviously revealing this, it's going to come down to lighting. It's not 100% tested yet. I'm going to reveal it in just a moment. Before I do, I just want to remind you for your chance to win some incredible prizes, make sure to enter that ASUS competition. Imagine an incredible future. I've imagined a horrible future to really bring my incredible future to life and I really hope the result is actually incredible. I've made this frame to help mask off the lighting so that it focuses directly into my piece. And the theory is if I turn off all the light out here and turn on an interior light, it'll come to life. Hit the lights! Does it work? It works! Yay! Epic reveals! I am so happy with this. I have never done an optical illusion like this before. The fact that my first attempt, I did two in one and it works so well. Even just doing that looks pretty cool, huh? <laughs> oh, I'm so happy with the result. But it was really fun not only imagining that future, but bringing it to life so I can show you. And thank you for watching. Smash that like button if you're as happy with the results as I am. And make sure to subscribe for future awesome videos, all sorts of art challenges and chaos. Till next time, I'll see you later.